Hi there, my name is Bruce Rain from Breakers Creations and in this video I'll be looking at the Zulu SCSI Pico Slim. If you're a vintage Mac collector, you will undoubtedly be aware of SCSI drive emulators. With old mechanical SCSI drives failing and no replacements being made, these new solid state devices that use SD cards as storage are the best way to keep your vintage Mac up and running. There have been quite a few different SCSI emulators out there, but right at this moment, the two dominant players are the Blue SCSI and the Zulu SCSI, and I use both. The Zulu SCSI comes from Rabbit Hole Computing, the same people who sell the SCSI to SD, the granddaddy of all SCSI drive emulators. The other day, I was contacted by my friend JJ Dasher, who has recently collaborated with Rabbit Hole Computing to produce this, the Zulu SCSI Pico Slim. The word Pico is in the title because it uses the Raspberry Pi Pico, a small but incredibly powerful development board, the same one used in the Blue SCSI V2. The Pico is inexpensive and there is a Wi-Fi variant which gives the Zulu SCSI Pico Slim the ability to add Wi-Fi networking to your vintage Mac, even if it is rather slow. The Zulu SCSI Pico Slim was inspired by the silly tiny SCSI created by Zigzag Joe. So far, everything I've described has been done before. The main difference with this device is its size. This is the smallest SCSI emulator I have ever seen. Apart from the obvious convenience of having such a small SCSI emulator, there is another very practical benefit. This is a Quadra 660 AV, one of my favourite vintage Macs. This large pizza box case was also used for the Quadra 610 and the Power Mac 6100. If you look at the back, there's this ridge of plastic right under the SCSI connector, which prevents many other external SCSI emulators from being used easily with these Macs. The Mac 2CI, 2CX and Quadra 700 have a similar problem. The Zulu SCSI Slim is so small, it doesn't bulge out the bottom like the other external SCSI emulators. Even in its protective case, it's the same thickness as the SCSI plug, so it can easily be used with these problematic Macs. So how do they get it so small? Well, I have a kit here, and I'm going to assemble it and show how they manage to squeeze it into such a tiny package. It's my understanding that for now the Zulu SCSI Slim is only available fully assembled, but a kit form will be made available soon. These are the three parts to the Zulu SCSI Pico Slim. We have the main PCB here, we have the Raspberry Pi Pico, and this is the Wi-Fi variant, you can tell from this little uh, metal rectangle right here, and then the external plug. 25-pin uh, plug. And the first thing I need to do is solder the Pico onto the underside of the slim board. Now, when this is soldered on, you uh, will notice that the USB port is sticking out the side. So the slim board actually has another uh, micro USB port on the back so that it's facing out the same side as the SD card slot. And I should also mention that this SD card slot is one of those pushy clicky ones, so that's quite nice. Now before I actually solder this on, I am actually going to put a little blob of solder onto these two pads under the micro USB port. And the reason for that will become clear in a moment. The uh, screen printing here shows which way the USB should be facing, and so that is that way there. And then we just have to get this lined up as best as possible and solder it on. I'll just start with one corner here. And then I can melt this and just get the position correct. Oops. Okay. Now I'm going to do the opposite corner. And then we're just going to solder the rest of them. Now, one of the frustrating things about the Raspberry Pi Pico is that none of these ports around the edges are linked to this USB connector. The pads for this USB connector 
uh, on the other side of the board, just here, the ones that I put solder on before. So in order to wire up this USB connector to the Pico board, I actually have to run a wire from this little pad here to that little pad there, and from this little pad here to that little pad there. And so that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so we've got those two wired up to the USB port. The next thing I have to do is solder this board to this 25 pin connector. And it's really cleverly designed. It slots right in between the pins of the connector like that. And these little plastic tabs that stick out, they line up with the holes of the connector to make sure that you get the position exactly right. And it's idiot proof uh, as well. If you put it around the wrong way, the pins don't line up. So that ensures that you get it the right way first time. So I'm just going to solder that on now. And that's the soldering done. All we need to do now is flash the Pico with the Zulu SCSI firmware. Firstly, I'll visit the Zulu SCSI GitHub page and download the latest release of the firmware. I need the Pico version, and I also want to utilize the DanaPort Ethernet emulation so I'll download this one here, the Pico Dana port, and I want the UF2 file. Once it's downloaded, I just hold down the boot select button of the Pico and then plug the Zulu SCSI Slim into the computer with a USB cable. A drive will mount onto your computer's desktop named RPI RP2. Just copy the downloaded UF2 file across to the RPI drive. Once complete, the Pico will restart and disappear from your desktop and it's now ready for use. For this next step, I want to add the DanaPort Ethernet functionality to the Slim. Here is the SD card I'll be using and I already have a few images on there. For the first step, go to the Zulu SCSI GitHub page with information about the DanaPort emulation. Just copy these three lines and drop them into a blank text file. You have the option to add a custom MAC address if you want to, but I won't be doing that. Now replace these defaults with your Wi-Fi network name and your Wi-Fi password. Be aware that one limitation of the Pico is that it can only connect to 2.4 GHz networks, not 5 GHz. Save the text file to the root directory of the Zulu SCSI SD card and name it zuluscsi.ini. The next step is to tell the Zulu SCSI which SCSI ID the DanaPort emulator should use. I'm already using IDs 0, 5 and 6, so I'll set mine up to SCSI ID 4. Create a new blank text file. There's no need for any content, but I'll save it to the root directory of the Zulu SCSI SD card and name it ne4.img. Change the number 4 to whatever SCSI ID you'd like to use. Now I can eject the SD card and pop it into the Slim and give it a try. I'm using System 8.6 on a PowerMac 7300 with a 400 MHz G3 upgrade card. The first thing I have to do is install the DanaPort software to recognize the Ethernet emulator. The software can be downloaded from the Macintosh Garden. If I was running this on System 7, I would just use the Easy Install. But because System 8.6 has some Ethernet components already installed that are newer than the ones on this installer, I'm just going to manually select the Ethernet SCSI driver and install it without anything else. Now that the driver is installed, I'm going to check the TCP IP control panel and see that it gives me the alternate Ethernet option. Now I'm going to fire up Internet Explorer to see if I'm connected to the network. And there you have it, browsing the web wirelessly on a PowerMac 7300. The next thing is to run a speed benchmark. This is not an exhaustive test, just the basic speed test from SCSI Director Pro. I'll be comparing the speed to the Blue SCSI V2 External and the Zulu SCSI Mini RP2040. These are all external SCSI devices, so it should be a pretty good comparison. To be honest, I really don't expect to see a whole lot of difference between these three, 
as they are all using the latest firmware and the same CPU. I'll also put in the results from the Zulu SCSI Compact RP2040, but this should get faster results as it's an internal device and can take advantage of this Mac's faster internal SCSI bus. All tests were performed with the same SanDisk Ultra micro SD card. The Zulu SCSI got better seek results than the Blue SCSI, but this is quite an early revision of the Blue SCSI external, which might be to blame for that. The throughput tests were all very similar, around the 6,000 kilobytes a second mark read and 4,500 to 5,000 kilobytes a second write. The Blue SCSI was a bit better on the read and the Zulu SCSI was a bit better on the write. Not surprisingly, the Zulu SCSI Compact got the best results due to the internal SCSI bus. There's one last thing I want to do, and that's design a new case. There's nothing really wrong with the one it came with, but it uses four screws to hold it together, and I prefer to build cases that just click together. The other thing is the access to the boot select button on the Pico. This case has a small hole where you can insert the end of a paper clip, but I want to make a button on the surface of the case that can be pressed without the need for a paper clip. This is my design here. It has these grooves in the bottom of the case, and there are these small ridges in the top that clip in and hold the two halves together. The bottom part of the ridge also holds the slim board in place. I also added this button on the bottom. I made the plastic thin here so it would have some flex, and I added this little cylinder to line up with the boot select button. I also put a little cutout circle on the outside of the bottom case to indicate where to press. This design is now available for download on Thingiverse. The past few years have been a fantastic time for advancement in the SCSI emulator market. Competition between Blue SCSI and Zulu SCSI has seen some brilliant innovations, and I'm sure there are many more to come. The Zulu SCSI Pico Slim is a great addition to the existing range of SCSI emulators available. If you're looking for good speed performance, competitive price, and a very compact size, the Slim is for you. Be aware that the Slim does not have configurable termination. Its termination is always on. So if you plan to use it in a chain of devices, it must be the last device in the chain. I'd like to thank Rabbit Hole Computing for sending me the Zulu SCSI Pico Slim to try. I have immediately put it to good use. You can purchase the Zulu SCSI Pico Slim from Rabbit Hole Computing or from JJ Dash's online store. Links are in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you like this sort of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.